How's it going everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch, back with another review. Today it's a horror game called Detention, provided to us by Coconut Island, so thank you very much indeed. My question of the day is, what is your favourite gaming genre? Mine is certainly horror if you had to push me. Let's get into the review of Detention and find out if it's worth your hard earned cash. Let's get into it. The story is set in 1960s Taiwan and the country's under martial law. We meet our first character Wei who falls asleep in class as you do, only to wake up and everyone was evacuated due to a typhoon on its way. I don't need to point out the obvious hole in the plot here, at least that's what I initially thought. I mean, if the school was being evacuated then why leave this poor kid sleeping? It was just a question I had on my mind at the beginning, but then this is a horror game and horror plots are usually, or well, often at best, quite thin. Luckily in this horror the story is quite well thought out and you'll find explanations as you go on. The game touches on sin, redemption and the afterlife and is deep subject matter which gets you drawn in from the beginning. As you begin to explore the school you start to uncover more to the story and without giving too much away it gets a lot more gripping the more you play. The beginning sets things up nicely and the game is reaped in the history of the country. You will begin to piece together more and more through picking up clues and snippets which will automatically update in your notebook. This is especially useful for a read through when you require and I found this to be a nice touch much like the journal used in Night in the Woods. In terms of audio I found the audio part of this review really quite difficult to write about and to actually talk about is because it somehow manages to be one of the strongest parts of the game without really ever having a musical score throughout. It's very clever how the instruments used are played at certain times during the game to ratchet up the tension. Sound effects like the wind from the typhoon when you go outside make the place sound even eerier. Everything sounds so creepy and nothing ever quite sits right, keeping you on edge at all times. Screeching sounds as you walk, the ghastly sounds of the ghosts send a shiver down the spine. I honestly hated coming across these blasted things due to the awful sound they make, like they're in real pain and can't wait to get close to you to alleviate their suffering. Not that it's bad, it's just damn right scary, like the recent Layers of Fear which I reviewed, the sounds in this game are fantastically realised. In terms of visuals and performance, visually the game just gets it right, it's 2D but not too cartoony like the recent Coma Recut game which was harder to take seriously due to its style. Here the sprites have an oddness about them, it's hard to put my finger on exactly what that is. The backgrounds have a nice amount of detail and movement to them and I especially enjoyed the outside scenes where the clouds are moving fast above you. The colours used are quite dark so there's no vibrancy but that's exactly what is needed to paint a picture of this dark and bleak place. Everything is made to look creepy, from the desk which is covered in an unknown substance, in the middle of the classroom, to the candle lit shrines. Even when you enter a room full of paintings, you feel something is wrong, maybe it's because some of them are turned sideways, upside down, or have their eyes closed like they didn't want to see the horror within. The ghosts have this animation which leaves you in no doubt that these guys are there to drain your life, shaking and traversing, shuffling quickly towards you, and if they get close enough, they're going to suck you dry. I didn't want to be in the near vicinity that's for certain. The game ran smoothly in handheld mode and I did not come across any performance issues at all. Now in terms of gameplay this is quite a simple game in that it's 2D scroller and you can move left or right. There's no toggle for differing speeds which is a little bit of a shame and the only time you slow down is when you're coming across lingerets which are the ghostly beings. You can hold your breath while walking past them so they don't hear you. Honestly though this would make me laugh every time as it's literally like some Someone's just let one off, to which you have no choice but to hold your breath as the smell is so bad. Of course this is not what the developers intended, but it didn't stop me laughing nevertheless. Now moving swiftly on in your horror adventure, you'll come across rooms where you have to explore, find certain items which each has a purpose. Objects of interest will show up on the screen when you get close enough and you can choose to click on them either to pick up the item, read or interact. These items will fill up your little inventory which you can access easily. On your travels you'll also find clues and notes to help you understand what you may need each item for. Now as an example to access a certain area I needed to find wire cutters to cut open a fence so I could get through it. 
you may need paint dissolver to dissolve paint and well the whole game kind of goes on like this until the end most of the game is spent in a 2d side scrolling mode except for when you encounter a puzzle and then you see what the character sees through their eyes now this makes it really nice to see if any items you have can interact with the certain situation using the little hand icon now you may need an umbrella to reach an item lodged somewhere I'm not going to tell you where as this will give it away but once the item has been used to accomplish the task it disappears from the inventory it really reminded me of the puzzles in Resident Evil and if you like the puzzle aspects of those games then I'm sure you'll enjoy them here. None of them are especially difficult but they were all interesting to solve and there are a couple of brain teasers nearer the end of the game. There may be times when you get stuck like I did and this will of course make your playthrough longer. Quite early on I knew I needed a third dice to complete a puzzle. I could not find the blasted thing so I must have spent about 30 minutes searching for it. Turns out I just didn't search one particular room hard enough and missed it completely. So just make sure you're thorough in each room because if you do miss something you will only curse yourself later. I found it a charm of the game as it meant I had more fun exploring even if it meant I was fearing for my life on each time I traversed the corridor. The ghosts are just kind of there to slow you down. Ordinarily you may say this sounds quite boring but on the contrary I found this game to be highly enjoyable and there's always some Something else which comes up which will ratchet up the horror factor. Without getting into spoiler territory there are some things you're going to find a little repulsive but then this wouldn't be a good horror game if it didn't repulse you every now and again. I must mention that you're unable to kill enemies or wield any type of weapons. The only thing you can do is avoid them and that may put some people off especially for those who are looking for their action fix. There is no ability to hide here either just hold your breath and time it perfectly so you can creep past as you can't hold your breath forever, perish and you have to start from your last save point. These parts of the game where you have to creep past the ghost are really tense and one wrong move and you could be toast. Luckily this isn't a one hit wonder where you die in one hit so that's always a good thing. There are times when you can feed these ghosts a little cake to distract them and while they eat you can hold your breath and creep past which offers a little variety to proceedings as it's entirely possible that you may need a ghost to move out of the way if it's blocking a certain path. In terms of saving your progress, this game does not save automatically, so you'll have to so save often in save rooms, much like the typewriters in Resident Evil. Bear in mind that there is nothing worse than getting far into the game, only to lose an hour of progress. No doubt this is an older style save system, but then again an auto save would have made this game a little bit too easy. For our friends in the USA, you're better off buying this game on the UK eShop. I don't know why, but the game is £7.59. In the US, it's $12.99, and I'm not saying that's not good value, but if you do the maths, buying this in dollars will cost you more at £9.34. So it's actually cheaper if you buy it on UK shores. The game is pure quality in every department, and at its current price, you're going to get about three to five hours of a harrowing but quality horror experience. You'll get more out of the game if you're willing to do what it takes to get the alternate ending. In summary, Detention is an indie game which can hold its own with the best. If you enjoy horror games, then this is an essential addition to your collection. A good story steeped in history, great audio, visuals and gameplay, you'll enjoy solving puzzles and avoiding ghosts. It does miss that action element some will crave and it's not the longest or most challenging game in the world, but if you're after a horror, then turn the lights down, the sound up and enjoy this dark and twisted horror experience an 8 out of 10 if you enjoyed this review guys and you know what to do hit that thumbs up button if you're a new watcher here then please consider subscribing to our channel for more reviews like this one leave me a comment down below let me know what you think of this review and what your favorite genre in gaming is i'd love to respond to you last but not least guys check out www.switchwatch.co.uk for many more written reviews and of course this game in written format as well my name is juan romero from switchwatch and i'll see you on the next one Thank you.